the early 1880s, when all law enforcement failed in Arizona territory, cattle rustling, robbery and murder began a notorious reign. As law agencies became disorganized, crime organized and grew powerful under the leadership of three of the West's most vicious outlaws. Johnny Ringo, Ike Clanton, and Curly Bill Brocious. The situation became so bad that President Chester A. Arthur on April the 26th, 1882, authorized the governor of Arizona Territory to resort to any means he saw fit to crush the rule of the outlaws. The last desperate battle against the murderous gangs of the West was to begin in a very strange way in a remote stretch of country just outside the town of Phoenix. suppose a young tyke like this is doing out all alone in the middle of nowhere. From his looks, he was out there quite a spell. Help me. Help. He must be having a nightmare or something. Where is he? Whoa, you fellow. Whoa, there. You've got to let me go. He'll find me. He'll find me and kill me. You just take it easy. You've been having a bad dream, that's all. I've been running from him, I tell you. Let me go. Now, there, young man. Why would somebody want to kill you? He was trying to. That's enough, isn't it? Did you do something wrong? I didn't do anything. Nobody would want to harm you for nothing. All right. Don't believe me. But I saw him kill that bomb at my house just the same. I saw him and he knows I saw him. Man, sex, that was a dream. Do you know what you're saying? You don't believe me either, do you? Well, I... I have no reason not to believe you. I don't care whether you do or not. I know it's true. I saw him kill my mother. And maybe I'll be big enough someday to... I'm thanking you for saving me. That's all I'm gonna say. We just want to help you, dear. We'll be in Tombstone in the morning. Do you live there? Poor little thing. Guess my husband wasn't figuring on anything like this, but uh, he warned me there could be trouble on this trip. Trouble? What with this stage carrying a strong box full of new silver money from the Denver Mint, and that outlaw, Matt Sloan and his gang in the territory. You saying Matt Sloan might try to hold us up? Well, papers kind of hinted that he was the one robbed the last shipment that went through here. It isn't your silver boy. 
are you so worried about? trying to do? Wake the dead? Sorry to get you up, mister, but my horse here needs taken care of. Been meaning to get rid of that sign open all night for six years. Tomorrow, so help me, I'm getting me a bucket of paint and gonna paint it out. As long as it isn't tonight. Suppose I can get me a room over at the hotel? Ain't filled up last I heard. Gotta make out a bill for your horse, mister. What's your name? Sloan. Matt Sloan. Sloan. Saddlebags. Nothing. I hope you've got a reason for this. Yeah, we got a real fine reason. That's why we had the clerk downstairs give you this room. Here in Johnny Ringo country, any man running the law is safe here. I give him protection. But nobody puts himself up in business like you did unless I say so. Now, where's the money from that silver shipment you grabbed last week? You must be crazy, Ringo. If I had that silver, I'd be in Mexico by now. Two posters are hanging on you in the sheriff's office right now. One for a silver job in Virginia City. The other for a $38,000 silver haul in Leadville. You're getting quite a reputation in silver. So we figured a tombstone ship would make a nice third poster. What are you gonna do, Ringo? Turn me in for the reward? <coughs> Don't make jokes with me, Sloan. I've killed a lot of men. And that don't leave me with much sense of humor. Now, where is that silver? I still don't know what you're talking about. Where is it? This'll make him talk. Oh, I beg your pardon, fellas. What I, do you I didn't want? know. I... You know me, Mr. Ringo. I'm Pete Beasley. I got a little homestead ten miles away. I know you're all right, but what are you doing here? Well, uh, I was figuring on talking to Mr. Sloan. Sure, come on in. Thank you. Sure, I recognize you down the street. So what? Uh, stopped by our place ten days ago. His horse went lame. We put him up till his horse was all right. Well, we, we sure like the way you earn your keep. Mighty handy around the ranch. You say Sloan was working for you? Yeah. You know who he is? Somebody in particular? 
When did Sloan leave your ranch? Oh, not till early this morning. Sorry to see him go because uh, Mrs. Beasley and I, we wanted to ask him to stay on. Regular. <laughs> Look, Beasley, I told you before, I'm no cow hand. So get out and leave me alone. Oh, too bad. I'm sorry to trouble you with anything. Right. Awful hard to find real hands in this country. You satisfied, Ringo? All right, so you and your men have had your fun. That silver shipment was six days ago. I've been working for them for ten days. So you see, I couldn't have done it. All right, now we get to something else. You've never bothered those silver shipments yourself. All right, so that's your business. Mine, well, maybe my business is something else. Want some advice, Sloan? Nobody's gonna grab that silver shipment. Remember that real good. It might keep you alive. Come on. Johnny. I still think he pulled that job. Yeah. Let him walk around loose, but watch him. If he's hitting that money, he'll head for it. And we don't want to be far behind. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Sure glad you came in with that ranch hand story when you did. They want to know about the silver? Real bad. Oh. You got any orders? Yeah. Where does Ringo hang out? Oh, his office is at the back of the Crystal Palace Saloon. I'm going to take a look around there later tonight. Is the meeting still on for the morning? Yeah, and you make sure that every man who was notified is there. I will. The next morning, a meeting took place in this decrepit little shack in a desolate, untraveled area far up in the hills outside Tombstone. It was a meeting destined to have a most important effect on the future history of the West. A meeting important enough to bring the governor of Arizona Territory from the capital at Prescott. Gentlemen, the President of the United States gave me complete jurisdiction in handling the outlaw situation for one reason only. Until all the bandits and outlaws are run out of this territory, Arizona cannot become a state. Four months ago, I authorized the forming of the Arizona Rangers as a secret law enforcement agency with Captain Sloan as your chief. Four months is a long time. So far, there has been no report of your progress. That's why I called this meeting today. The president is demanding that report now. 
Well, Governor, it has taken time, but that couldn't be helped. However, we have made progress. We've got men operating out of Prescott, Phoenix, and Tucson. We've got others planted in telegraph offices, post offices, saloons, silver mines, just about every place we can pick up information. Information is one thing, but something solid to go on is another. Well, one thing solid, Governor, is the fact that we've got Ringo convinced that I'm wanted by the law. We staged a silver robbery to find out if there's a connection between Ringo and the silver shipments in this area that have not been held up. Well, we've proven one thing. There is a connection between Ringo and the silver. Just what it is, we don't know yet. Trying to follow that through, I found this in Ringo's office. These are established cattle brands. Cattle brands from some of the largest cattle ranches in this territory. The two on top have been crossed off. And we don't know what the marks alongside the brands mean. However, each one of my men will get a copy of this, and our next job is to figure out what they mean. Well, that about brings us up to date, Governor. There's nothing more to report. I'm satisfied, Captain. I think we're on the right track. But doesn't it seem impossible that there could be a tie-up between cattle and silver? Rango has been doing the impossible for quite some time now. All right, Captain. I'll go by your judgment. The President will be notified of your progress. Someday we'll be a state. Arizona won't forget. I think the entire nation will have something to thank you for. Goodbye, men. God go with you. Bye, Governor. Bye, Governor. Bye, Governor. Bye, Governor. Well, men, that does it. Now, remember, don't be seen together in Tombstone. We'll leave for town about ten minutes apart. All right. Good luck to you. What are you doing in town? Not you. Your boy ran away. What? Yeah, he left a note saying he was coming here to see you. I told you not to let him out of your sight. Matt, I'm sorry. I tried to keep it from happening, but he saw the posters that were out on you. He thinks his father's turned out law. Just what I was afraid would happen. Joe, this, this job isn't worth it. I don't have the right to do this to the boy. Not after what's happened to his mother. Well, Matt, you said you had something on the guy who killed her. The trail led here. He might be right here in Tombstone. I don't know. He's the only one who knows what the killer looks like. He's in real danger. We've got to find him before he can get here. How? I checked the stage office. He's not on the passenger list. Well, he certainly can't walk here. Maybe he tried to get on the stage somewhere along the line. Meet me outside of town in ten minutes. On the south road. All right. One more stop for water, and then we go right on into Tombstone. Shouldn't be more than a couple of hours. Now that we're better friends, maybe you'd like to tell us about your father. I don't have a father. Everybody has a father, young man. Not if he doesn't want to, he doesn't. Who are you men? What do you want? 
the boy's father. Well, I shouldn't think you'd be so quick to admit it. What happened? Who shot him? I'd say your concern comes a little late. I asked you what happened. We picked him up on the road. All he said was that somebody was chasing him, trying to kill him. If that boy were my son... Well, he's not. <laughs> easy, easy, Terry. Matt, you can't take him back to your hotel room with this killer running around loose. Anybody see anything? No, but the shot come from up there. Joe. I don't know what you've done to that boy, but he hates you. He doesn't want to be with you. He say that? He did. I'm not going to argue with you. No more stops till you hit Tombstone. Driver, go directly to my place. The boy is staying with me. Now, just a minute. I'm not going to argue either. I live in Tombstone and I have an extra room there. I heard what your friend said about the hotel. All right, we'll leave it at that for the time being. Thanks for helping him. It's appreciated. <laughs> There's been a shooting. Please get Dr. McAvoy. Are you all right? Hurry, Dad. This way. Just put him in here. Dad? Yes, son? How does it feel, boy? All right, I guess. shouldn't have followed me here. But, Dad, the fellow who shot me, he saw me in the woods right after I got out of town. He followed me all the way here. Well, don't you go worrying about it anymore, because he won't get to you here. Dad? Yes, son? I saw those posters with your picture. Yeah, Joe. Joe told me. We'll talk about it later. You better let him rest. He'll be all right. It's the first time I ever treated a child that had been shot. We're going backwards. All of us out here. You better come along now. Leave him be. Mr. Cooper, you being the assayer here, you must know just about every man in the territory. If you think I have any idea who shot your son, even the rough ones around here don't gun down children. Your son said that he saw some posters with your pictures on them. You haven't told us your name. Yeah, that's right, ma'am. If I do, you probably wouldn't want my boy around here. Oh, I'm sure that would make no difference. Well, first of all, let me tell you why he was shot. Why don't you tell it to Sheriff Ridgely? He's the law in Tombstone. Law in Tombstone? Ridgely works for Ringo. You've got no sheriff. Well, uh, suppose you tell us, sir. It might ease things up a bit. Well, before I came up here, I was working for the law in Texas. I was getting evidence against a big outfit that was doing a lot of rustling. One day, I, I got a warning to get off the job. I didn't pay much attention to it. Next thing I knew, they'd, they'd bomb my house. They'd kill my wife. Terry was the only one who saw the man who did it. That's why I figured the same man shot Terry today. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. But as to your name. My name is Matt Sloan. Matt? The man they say robbed that silver shipment? But if you were with the law in Texas, I quit the law, Miss Cooper. 
so that I could get the man who killed my wife. I left Terry with a friend of mine in Phoenix. I, I figured he'd be safe there. But, well, you folks know the rest. You loved your wife a great deal. What did you find? Nothing. Not a sign of him. I followed his tracks to a creek, but he kept his horse in the water after that. He's still on the loose. Mr. Sloan, what would happen to Terry if you did find this man and kill him? He's still your son. Would he keep running from the law with you? Man who shot you, Terry? No. Lay down, try to get some rest. Let's get out of here fast. for helping Terry, but he'll be safer, and so will you and your father if I get him out of here. Just want you to know I'm grateful. That's Sloan. Come in. Sloan must be gone, all right. Did you see anything, Clinton? Checked out the hotel. Nobody's seen him. I said I wanted him watched. He wasn't to leave town. You got slugged with someone helping Sloan. That means he's not working alone. You figure he's planning another silver robbery? Maybe it's more than silver, Johnny. What do you mean, more? There are other places where Sloan could get silver a lot easier than here. You've had a soft touch for a long time. You think maybe Sloan's got his eye on our setup? You're crazy, Clint. Let him talk. Go ahead. He was a big operator around Virginia City and Leadville. Could be, he's building up his outfit. Figured now he can move in on us. Bill, I want you to round up every man you can. I want Sloan. Like in the posters, Johnny, dead or alive. Just like in the posters. Mr. and Mrs. Beasley. They'll take care of you. You'll be safe here. No one will be able to find you. You don't want to talk about the posters, do you? Yes, I do, Terry. You know, there, there are a lot of things I want to talk to you about. But I can't just now. So you'll just have to wait things out and, and trust me for a while. I wish I was back in Texas. I wish Mom was here. I know, son. <laughs> you sure gave me the willies riding in like that. Pete, I've got to get a hold of Sloan. You got some information? Yes. I'll get him. Don't worry, Mr. Sloan. I raised five of my own and none of them ever wanted for love. Thanks, Mrs. Beasley. Matt, you better come up. It's important. This morning, Olmstead here got this telegraph from our man working out of Prescott. Now, men, we know why the two top brands were crossed out. The Rocking X and Sam Crossy's Ranch. 
Both these ranchers had big herds rustled from them in the last two weeks. In other words, you expect the next three on the list, the ones not checked off to get rustled next. Well, now it could work that way. Our only chance is to prove the tie-up between Johnny Ringo's gang and the rustling. Without that information, we're no closer to the man who's doing the thinking for Ringo than, than we are right now. Now, Hellman, right. your job is going to be to watch Ringo. Right. Watch every move he makes. Blaine, you'll watch Curly Bill. Burgess, you'll handle like Clanton. Now, the next place on the list is the Bugle Ranch, Tom Johnson's ranch, up in the eastern part of the territory. I'm going to stake out on that one myself. If they hit, I'll follow the herd and see where they take it. You going alone? Yeah. I'll be in touch with Olmstead through the nearest telegraph in the area. If I need help, I'll let you know. We still don't have the answer to those marks alongside the cattle brand. Well, now, Pete, you and Joe, you stick with that. Now, we know very well that those marks are there for a good reason. Well, fellas, that about does it. Best of luck to you. Joe. Yeah? You know the money that's in the bank? Oh. Yeah. Terry will be taken care of. All his life, a fella gets into the habit of thinking about tomorrow. And along comes a job like this, and well, he just can't afford to have that habit. Captain Matt Sloan moved into the eastern section of Arizona Territory to stake out the Bugle Ranch belonging to Tom Johnson. Five days later, the break came. The Bugle brand was being rustled. Sloan followed the herd long enough to learn what he wanted to know. The rustled cattle were being taken across the border into Mexico. Clanton was right. Sloan's fighting out every move we make. It. You want to be looking right down his teeth. Sloan's vital information had to be sent to the rangers in Tombstone immediately. Want something, mister? Can you get a wire out right away? Fast as you can write it. Take an engine and wait. He'll be coming out. What could he be wanting in the railroad station? What difference does it make? There you are. What's this, code or something? Don't make much sense. Thought it sounded pretty good myself. You just sent it, huh? Want to wait for an answer? Yeah. Mind if I water my horse? Help yourself. You've got to get out of here. I only took this job because the doctor told me I needed peace and quiet. I heard the key going. Your message came while the ruckus was going on. Don't make much more sense than the one you sent. The coded message from Joe Bogger asked Sloan to go into Mexico. It stated, urgent you meet Burgess, Del Rio Cantina. By late afternoon, Sloan had crossed the border and reached his objective the little village of Del Rio near Cananea.
What is it, Americano? All day long you stay in your room alone. You like to be alone? Sometimes. This is one of the times. Then maybe tonight, senor. Sure, sure, tonight. <laughs> Hold on, ma'am, not so fast. Many shots there. Did you see who did it? No, I did not see his face. It came through the window. Uh, get some help fast. Si, sí, senor. Uh, Ali. What is it, Mac? What are Ali. you trying to say, boy? Ali, Grant. Mac. Mac. Senor. Get me to Colonel Emilio fast. But of course, that is exactly what I had in mind. You're under arrest. Vámonos. Take a look at that, Colonel. My government has been informed of your secret organization. We have agreed to give you all the cooperation that we can. There was one of these in the dead man's body. That's right. Burgess was assigned to follow White Clanton. We know this, Clanton. I'd say that Burgess found out something. That's why he was killed. You know, he, he got out one word. Yes? Ala, alacron, something like that. Does that mean anything to you? It is a Spanish word for scorpion. Scorpion, well, that, that doesn't mean much. Perhaps not, and perhaps yes. It might not be that he was talking about a scorpion. There's a mine a few kilometers from Del Rio. It is owned by Senor Fernandez. It is called the Alacran. The Alacran is a silver mine. Silver? I found this in Johnny Ringo's office. Wouldn't you say that looks like a scorpion? See, the claws, the hook tail. That's right. It is possible. And this, this could be a candlestick, could it not? Yeah, it could. Does that mean anything to you? The Candelero mine, too, produces silver. This could fill in an awful lot of empty spaces. Would you like to meet the owners of the mines? No. No, we can't show our hands to anyone until we've got the whole operation pinned down. But I would like to pick up where Burgess left off before I go back across the border. You will get all the help you need. Thank you, Colonel. Benetta. By the way, uh, Burgess has no family. It's a sad way to die. No family. We will take care of him, Captain Sloan. Bill Brochus just rode back into town. <laughs> well, you don't believe all the rumors you hear, do you? Well, there has to be some truth in it. It's, it's all over town. Ringo sent men out to find Matt Sloan and, and kill him. Bill Brochus was one of those men. Dale, honey, you've got to forget about Sloan's boy. Even if Sloan has been killed, you still don't know where to find the boy. No, I've tried, Dad. I've tried every way I know. Nobody has any information. It's just as though Terry disappeared into thin air. You know, honey, I... I think I made a big mistake. I shouldn't have asked you to stay here with me while we made our stake. I would have whether you asked me to or not. Mm, I know you would have. But you need your own life. A husband you can look up to. Your own family. Not some other woman's child. Well, you hardly know Terry. It's not much you have to know about a small boy. No. No, I suppose not. Matt Sloan's dead. Terry's an orphan now. A man like me gets older. He thinks he's wise enough to handle almost anything. Then something like this comes up. Sweetheart. If Sloan has been killed, it'll come out, just like it's come out about all those men who were sent to kill him.
He was trailing the herd, sending telegrams. Why? You not only get Leslie killed, but you get chased back here without learning anything. Sloan caught us in the open, Johnny. Leslie got gunned down, I, I didn't have a chance. Don't tell me you were caught in the open. You'd have shot him in the back or ambushed him. Look. Shut up! Now, this man you shot in Del Rio, you ever seen him before? Nope. He followed me right to the Alacran mine, that's all I know. He could have been one of Sloan's men. I'll say this again, Johnny. As soon as Sloan knows everything we do, he might try pushing us around. He'll be coming back. And we'll be ready for him. To see you in one piece, Matt. Good to see you too, Pete. We're just wasn't quite that lucky. Was it I, Clanton? Probably. How's Terry? Oh, almost good as new. Still a little weak, but walking around. That's good. We'll talk a while then. Then I'll go ahead and see him. Don't expect too much from him, Matt. He doesn't want to feel this way. You know how he idolized you? He'll be doing it again. Maybe it won't be too long before I'll be able to tell him the truth. Burgess had something to tell you. Yeah. I think he gave us a key to the whole thing, Pete. Smuggling. Smuggling? That's right. Smuggling silver. Now, this is the way I think the operation works. They rustle cattle up here, drive them across the border into Mexico, sell them for silver bullion from Mexican mines. Then they smuggle the silver back up here into Tombstone. Rig it some way so they can get rid of it to the American government. And $25,000 worth of Mexican silver is worth 100000 up here. That's right. But there has to be an American mine tied in with it. You know, the American government won't buy silver unless it comes from one of its own mines. And we still have to know who's in back of the deal and what mine is involved. That's right. Well, you pass the information on to the boys. Now I'll go and see Terry. Don't worry. I won't expect too much. Terry? Terry? It's your pa, son. He came back. Pete here tells me you're feeling much better. Where you been? Nobody would tell me. Things aren't much like they used to be, are they, Terry? Nothing's any good anymore. Son, this, this might be a little hard for you to believe, but I'm doing what I have to do. Things are going to change. Someday they're going to be just the way you want them. But you've got to give me a little time. You should have left me at Della Cooper's. He's been talking about her, Matt. It ain't the first time. She's a perfect stranger, boy. We, we, we couldn't have left you there. I don't care what she is. You go on back to sleep. I'll see you again real soon. about Miss Cooper? Why? Well, I've been watching things in town. She's been asking questions about him, trying to find out where he is. He even pumped me a couple of times. You know, she's an awful lot like his mother was, Pete. Maybe a kid and a woman can recognize that faster than we can. Well, what about Ringo? The trail made a circle down in Mexico and right back here. We boxed in. Well, we know his operations. We can't prove it just yet. There aren't any more trails to follow, unless we can force them to make some. Well, I'm going into Tombstone. There are 50 guns in that area looking for you. There are two things to be done. I'm going to try to do them. Take it easy. It'll be 
right soon, and I've only got a couple of minutes to talk to you. And I must talk to you. Will you listen to me? Look, it's about Terry. Is he all right? Yes, he's all right. He's fine. But this is about something else. I hear you've been trying to find out where he is. Why? Places like Tombstone aren't for women. Cruel and savage. And lonely. I only stay because of my father. You want me to tell you why I feel attached to the boy? I can't, not really. Maybe it's because we both feel lost. Look, I... I couldn't have left, left him with you then. For your own good and for his, too. Why did you come here tonight? Ringo's men are all over town wanting to kill you. Well, they'll try. That's why I had to talk to you. Look, if I am killed, I want you to... I want you to have Terry. Now, look, a, a boy needs a woman's bringing up. Joe Barger knows about my money at Prescott. That'll, that'll be yours to, to help raise him. When did you reach this decision? I didn't. It, it was Terry. If it's necessary, will you, will you take him in? Yes. Thanks. I won't worry about him anymore. Where are you going, Matt? Johnny Ringo walks on eggs. But he doesn't leave many tracks. Let's just say that I'm going out to break some of those eggs. Outside of me, you must be the first one up in town, eh? Uh, gonna put your horse up? What you think I was gonna do? Get him a room in the hotel? I'll pick him up tonight. Sure. Let's talk fast, Clinton. I don't have any time to waste. What's the name of the mine that Ringo's silver's supposed to come from? Silver? You're crazy. I don't know anything. What? Don't talk in circles with me, Clinton. You picked the wrong man. I don't know a thing. Stop. You're killing me. What's the name of that mine? All right. All right. Let me breathe. We go kill you. It came from the barrelhead. Barrelhead mine. Who gives Ringo his orders? I don't know. I swear I don't. None of us does. But there is somebody, isn't there? I don't know. You've never seen him. That's the truth. Here. Yeah. time in your stable. Oh, I got no use for Johnny Ringo. And don't worry about me talking. Keep your money. But if Ike's collars are, are a little too big for him now, I reckon I could use his shirts. All right, let's get going. Joe, we'll split up here. In a couple of hours, you check the barrelhead mine. I should meet you back here sometime tonight. Right. What do you think you'll find in that mine? Nothing, Clanton. Not even silver. My guess is the barrelhead mine is a played out hole in the ground. But you check it. Watch your step while you're doing it. Where are we going? Mexico. Ever hear of it? Mexico? What for? What's the idea? One of my men was killed in Del Rio. Maybe you'd like to tell the Ruales who did it, huh? All right, let's move. Good luck, Joe. Yep. Now, Colonel, we're, we're not quite ready yet. And I'd suggest that no one make a move in the direction of the Alacran or the Cantalero mines. You can hold on to him until I get the others ready for the trial. At that time, I should have all the evidence I need. You think you'll get me to trial, Sloan? You're crazy. It's been tried before. 
There are other men with tin badges who've tried to get Ike Clinton and Johnny Ringo, and we've still got the store open. <laughs> Let me put you straight, you filthy gun hawk. Don't make me hate you any worse than I do, or I'll kill you here without a trial. This isn't just a tin badge after you and Johnny Ringo this time. When Arizona becomes a state, they won't even know that you were alive. Tonight, Ringo starts running, and I'm going to keep him running. I'll keep in touch with you. Trouble? No, everything's fine. We've got Clanton in cold storage until we need him. What about the barrel head? What did you find out? I found out you're right about that mine. The shell, it's all played out. There's not enough paint silver in that mine to buy Ringo a hat. Well, that explains why Ringo never bothered the silver shipments around here. He was afraid the government might investigate his mine operations. Also explains why he tried to get that silver back that we took. Yeah, that's right. All the silver that comes from the barrel head mine has to be the smuggled bullion from Mexico. Did you find out who owns the mine? Well, a fellow by the name of Emma Mallard, San Francisco address. Well, that could be a dummy name. The man we're looking for, I think, is right here in Tombstone. The man who's giving Ringo his orders. You know, Matt, this thing's got me crazy. Here, we've got all the facts we need, but we don't have enough evidence to bring him to trial. You're so right, Joe. Let's get into town. Wait a minute, not now. Yeah. I want to get Dan to run a special story in tomorrow's paper. You know, it's just like you say, we've got the facts, but we need more evidence. I think Ringo's going to help us get it. Three days. Just three more days and then we're finished. Paper just came out, Johnny, and the town's gone crazy already. Everybody's sending telegrams to Washington to find out what happened. This will close down every silver mine in the country. Where's that fool Clanton? Just when I need every man, he disappears. Probably off someplace getting drunk. Come here. Take this. Get down to Mexico and buy all the cheap silver you can. When it runs out, tell them we'll move another shipment of cattle across the border by tomorrow night. We've still got three days to sell to the government. This is our last chance to make a killing, and we're going to make it. But, Johnny, we just pulled a deal. It's always been safer to wait and pick our spots. I know, but our hands being forced, we haven't got time to wait for anything. Spread the word to the boys. By the time you get back from Mexico, maybe I'll have some more orders for them. It's all right, it's Pete. It worked. Curly Bill Brocious is on his way to Mexico. Good. Get the men staked out at the Barrelhead Mine. And remember, we don't make a move until they are actually ready to deliver the bullion to the mine. Mm -hmm. That's our evidence. And tell the men in town to be ready for anything that might come up. You think we got Ringo this time? Well, if we haven't, he's got us. He'll know with the law. How long am I going to have to stay down here? I hope not much longer, Terry. But you don't know not really, do you? Isn't that up to your father? I guess a lot of things are up to him. Terry, dear. I ain't very hungry. But you have to eat, son. Thanks, Mrs. Beasley. I just can't.
Senor Fernandez. They told me at your house that you would be here, Coronel Emilio. I must talk to you on a most urgent business matter. Business? I am not in the silver business, senor. I know nothing about mining. That does not seem to stop you from showing a great deal of interest in the Alacran mine. Or in my business associate, senor Clanton. My interest is with criminals, senor Fernandez. On what charges are you holding, senor Clanton? Mining is your business. Men who break the law are mine. I am not a man to waste time, Coronel Emilio. In this bag, there's enough money to make you wealthy. More money than you will ever earn in your lifetime. For this, you will release Senor Clanton immediately. You believe I can be bribed? <laughs> you do me an injustice. This is a business transaction. Place Senor Fernandez under arrest. You are making a most great mistake, Coronel Emilio. Arrest him, I said. One minute! <laughs> Get to Ringo quickly. Tell him what's happening. Thanks. isn't safe for you, you know that. Could I have some water? away again, Dad. But Della, this is no time to have to you bother with... You've all night to come to me. Perhaps I should get the doctor for it. No one can know he's here. Did you see the mine owners? Yes. They didn't know any more about it than I do. But they all admit they'll have to close down. Della, we'll be leaving Tombstone. There won't be any need for an assay office anymore. I won't have any fond memories, Dad. I think you'll have one. See if you can spot that wagon. All right, men, you know what to do. the hill. Good. Now remind the men not to make a move until Curly Bill actually delivers the silver. We need that evidence. Right. Are the men ready in town? Yeah. Good. I'm going to try to move in closer. Be careful.
Hey, Ringo. Those posters on Sloan are fakes. He's a lawman. And he's got a whole pack of men working with him. You mean to tell me that story in the paper was just bait to get us into a trap? That's right. The Mexican guards didn't know I understood Spanish. I heard the whole thing. Sloan's at the barrelhead, got the trap set right now. We may have to go to the mine, get horses, and bring them around to the assay office. Hurry up! I've got to. Dave. Dave, we're in real trouble. I don't want to hear about it. Come on, get out of here. Get it. What is it? What do you want with my father? You stay out of this. Now, you listen to me. Clinton just found out what's happening around here. Sloan's a lawman, a ranger working for the governor. There's been a bunch of them here getting the goods on us. They're waiting at the barrel head right now to grab that last shipment. All right, it's in your lap, Cooper. Now, what are your orders? Well, I... I don't know. I've got to think. I've got to think! Well, you better think pretty fast. Well, that's the best we could do on short notice. But 82 bricks at $850 a piece will get us over $68,000. We're leaving tomorrow night for another load. Nobody move. Sloan. We're taking that silver and you're all under arrest. You ain't taking nothing. That's shooting at the barrel head. both ends of the street. We can't get out. He's the one. The man who killed my mother. Why, you stick no. out of that you're gone away. You crazy? This kid's gonna get us to the border. No, please. Get away. You coming, Cooper? It's your last chance. Leave the boy, Ringo. That's an order. Leave him alone. An order? You're not giving orders to anybody now. Come on. You try to stop us, and Sloan's kid gets killed. Harry! I'm waiting. All right, Ringo. If anything happens to that boy, there won't be a hole big enough for you to hide in any place.
One more thing. Ike Clanton is the man who killed your wife. If they're holding Terry as a hostage, you'll keep him alive till they get to Mexico. Nellis, what happened? I think you'll find the man you're looking for at the assay office. He's dead. He was my father. decide where home is. The outlaw empire of Arizona Territory had been broken. And in this new and decent land, Captain Matt Sloan found his home. 